Hi, this is Stacy or Stacky Scraps, and today I'm bringing you a brand new tutorial all about how to use the beta version of Make the Cut, version 2.0.3, to make a coloring page into a multiple layered file. So with that in mind, I'm going to bring you straight into the image. I did get it from thecolor.com. It's a festive guy for St. Patrick's Day, and I may reference him later, but here's what the image looks like. I just right clicked and saved it. While it's rendering, I'll go ahead and show you. See him? He's right here. So it's going to, it should trace pretty well. I don't anticipate any problems with that. And I want to talk to you briefly about these layers. We've added in layers here, and that's going to be where a lot of the new exciting stuff is. This looks like it traced perfectly well, so I'm going to click and accept it. I want to zoom in for a minute. And I want you to take a look at this functionality because it is new and it's making our lives easier. So to size an image, and we can size it any which way, we're going to click on the red arrow in the direction we want to go and it'll size it automatically. Okay? The other things we can do here, if you double click, you can rotate. You can rotate it any which way there. And the last thing you can do is if you double click, this will warp it. Okay, warp your perspective. So just so you know that, because that is a little different, and you change between them by double clicking. I like to work with my images very large, so what I'm going to do first here is click on this red arrow that pops out and make it really nice and big. Okay, then I am going to break it apart into all its little pieces so it'll become a multiple layered image just like I would have in older versions. Now, here's where your differences start, and I've just made the layer properties go up higher so I can, because I use them a lot, by clicking and dragging in between the two boxes there. Here you see everything comes into the default layer, so this is like a main layer, and then there's sub layers underneath it. And I want you to notice right now that since everything is selected, there's a red box around all of these pieces, so all of your pieces are actually selected. So I'm going to double click to unselect everything and the first thing I'm going to do is just get rid of this information on the bottom that I don't need. So I drew a box around it and now I can click the delete button or, sorry, press the delete button on the keyboard or I can click the delete shape X here. I'm going to use the keyboard and you see that it went from having trace 1 through 14 to trace 15 being your first piece here. So now, if I hover over, you can see the new selection. I think this is really nice. It shows you what you're about to click on, which piece you're about to click on. So if I want to select a single piece, I can either do it here. Say I want to select this outer face. I can do it by clicking on it here. Or I can scroll down on my layers, or I'm sorry, yes, my layers, and click on it where I find it here. So I think this is going to be really great. With that in mind, I'd like to show you kind of how these layers work and why they're so advantageous. Please don't be scared of them. I swear they're a wonderful thing for all of us. So I think of layers as a grouping. So the idea is what do I want to group together? And for me, the main thing I always want to group together is by color. You'll see why it's advantageous at the end, but the main idea is that if I group by color, then I can cut by color. I can also change the color of each layer by color. I hope that makes sense. If not, it will, I think, once you see it. So with that in mind, I'm going to start by telling you that I'm going to use my green. So what I want to make green are the inside pieces of this shamrock and the two pieces of the hat. If I hold down shift and I click on the pieces I want, so this one, this, this one, and then the two pieces of the hat, and you see that the box gets larger as you're doing it showing you what you've selected and I hit join it makes them all one piece together one layer see it's selected and it you can see it has the hat and the three pieces I'm now going to layer this by color this is my own method that I've come up with I enjoy it this way so I'm going to say green and I'm also going to change the color because I want a darker green this sub layer stuff you can move the layers up or down and you can change the color and delete. So I'm going to click on change color. It looks like a 3x3 three three grid of colors. And I'm going to make it this regular green right here. Okay? So there's another method for this, which is 
I think we've talked about this before in coloring page technique if you've hung with me through those. But instead of having three layers for anything that's black, instead of putting this nose, for instance, on top of the piece, I'm going to cut it out of the face. And that way the black will show through. Otherwise, I would have to have a separate nose piece on top. So I'm going to select now all the pieces of my face and the face itself so I can cut those holes out. So I'm going to hold down my shift again. It's the same method. I'm going to click on the mouth. I'm going to click on the outline silhouette of the shamrock, nose, the two eyebrows, and the ear piece, and the face. And you do want to select the smaller pieces first. At least I think it's much easier that way so you can see your box getting bigger and make sure you have all your items selected. I again am going to click join to do this. And now I'm just going to drag it out so you can see that there's actually all these pieces cut out as far as a hole goes. I'm going to double click here and I'm going to name this tan because it's going to be a tan face. Now you do not have to name all of these, but I just like the organization of it and I think it makes it nice so I'm going to click here to change the color and I'm gonna make it this tan color here that leaves me with two pieces that I'm not gonna to have to adjust at all other than color uh, this is gonna be a piece of hair so I'm gonna go orange I'm gonna give them red hair and I'm gonna call it orange and then this is my silhouetted background and I'm gonna call it black because I like to name them all by colors and let me just change the color on it to black as well. So now I'm actually done creating my layers, but there's a really nifty thing that I think is so huge for us with these layers. And that is if you're in a main layer here, like the default, it has this eye. And when the eyes open, you can see it and your Cricut can see it. When it's closed, you can kind of see the background, but your Cricut cannot see it. And if you look at the print preview right here, you would see that right now, the cut preview, you would actually have nothing to cut. So say I wanted to actually cut this guy out at this size, it would be great to be able to just tell it which color I want to cut. And that's why I want to make main layers out of everything. So in order to do that, I click on the layer I want, and I click this button down here, which is Selection to New Layer. Okay, I'm going to do that for all four. Just like that and now there's nothing in my default layer I don't need it so I'm going to click X and delete it now this is my personal preference I like to name them all now what they are as well but you do not have to do this so I'm going to do silhouette this one is hair face and hat and face paint Okay, so now, and if you see, it has just the black piece in it. The reason I did this is, say I'm starting to cut and I want to cut all of my green things first. I can just tell it to hide or close the eyes on all these other pieces, and now only my green piece is going to show, and if I hit my cut preview, it's only going to cut those pieces. So I hope that helps you understand why this is very useful. Also, if you're looking at it in a different format, like in the, the black theme, what you might run into is see how my silhouette is on the top so I can't see anything else? If I move it all the way down by clicking the down arrow, then I can see everything. So just a warning on that because I like to have everything in this format when I'm about to cut so I can take a look. All right, but what if I want to make it smaller? Well, actually, the new version makes that very easy, too. If I draw a box around everything to select it, I can actually just move, resize it like I did when it was one piece now, and it makes everything smaller in proportion. I think that's great. What I also think is great is if I want to cut it all on the same mat, which I know I do a lot, so I can put all my little squares. I can drag by layer now, so I don't have to move all the pieces and be a math whiz and tell it to move so much and all this. I can just drag them and it drags it by layer, by color. That is the end of my tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope it helps. Thanks so much for sticking with me.